He's looking. He's looking. I'm microscopic, you know? I'm small. Wait, he's de is he descending? Hold up. Crap. He's he's actually. Guys! Oh, he's descending! I see it. I see it. Look at this shit. Dude, he is close. Look at that. He's like looking. Oh my god! He was staring right in there! So what is going on guys, this is Ryan here, and welcome back to Subnautica. So this is going to be part 12 guys, and I'm going to keep this intro very brief. For this episode guys, we have three main things that we need to do. First of all, we need to try and find what the freak Kyanite is, I've never heard of that before in my life. Sounds like some of that scientist bajumba. I can assume however though guys, that it is a game changing material, just to like Nickel or Woods, that was kind of like the phase 2, and I think Kyanite is like phase 3. It's a phase 3, okay? Leave me alone. In order to find Kyanite though guys, I think we're going to have to take a fairly heated journey. Journey, as it were, into the lab. So, I need to get this guy, though, that I'm in the prawn suit to the Mark II. Then we need the Cyclops to get to the Mark III. And I definitely need a moon pool, of which I'm hoping I managed to pack a lubricant inside this guy. Because if we didn't, guys, we've got to make a big journey. I was looking to see if there was, like, a way you can get lubricant down here. No. Th there really isn't. Crap. Yeah, I definitely do not have any lubricant. So I'm going to have to make a trip all the way back up to the surface just after getting down here for one single lubricant. Fortunately for you guys, you already know how we do things around here. We've made this trip about four times already. So I'm only going to be showing you the bits that actually matter. Firstly, though, let's get back over to the CMOS. Now, another thing, guys, if you do enjoy this video, definitely leave me a like rating down below. I mean, the theory was exactly right last time. When I asked for likes on the Subnautica episodes, I actually got double the amount, which is so, so encouraging. So I'm going to ask again guys and if you can do that again well i mean you know encourage them you know let's get back over anyway to the seamoth and get this journey under ropes Aye. under ropes is that the right saying now you guys may notice some differences as well with the graphics and i mean as it's starting really <laughs> hey, i say that i actually upgraded to the uh, nvidia 1080 ti and uh, yeah it was very expensive i figured that if i want to enjoy games like this sorry i peed myself anyway let's get the freak out of here and get that freaking lubricant all this freaking way for just one of this good stuff you know what let me just load out of this just to be safe things you do in this game guys for the smallest benefits, right? Oh my god. Now, I don't know if I should say that's a lucky landing or a really unfortunate one because, I mean, it's still busted up, you know? The thing about this ghost leviathan in this area is that if you're in a small vehicle, no problem at all. I don't even think he can actually see you. So it's literally no bother, though. I'd prefer not to hear the cries and just pretend that he doesn't even exist. And yeah, that would be better. And we are back. So let me just get into the prawn suit. I uh, need to double check what we actually need for this moon pool, but I think I'm gonna make this out of the way. Okay, so the moon pool, we need two titanium ingots, one single lubricant, and two lead. The easiest thing ever! The thing about this game is that once you enter like the Lost River, that is like the easiest task in the world. You literally need one single deposit of titanium. I'm gonna make the lead already, or the lubricant, should I say. You know what? I'm gonna make two of those, and I've realized a big problem already. So the crush depth on the Seamoth is 900, but my base is about 910, so. It's never gonna get knocked it anyway. So I guess we only need one of the moon pools down here. But we could save the other lubricant then for the base that's above the surface for both docking the prawn suit and then the sea moth. So I guess not all is lost. Only part though. Only part of my plans. Anyway, moving on now to the next planet. Let's go find ourselves a titanium and a lead deposit. And that's pretty much all we need. I'm sure I saw a lead deposit or a titanium one just as I came over like this cusp here. Yep, I thought I did. Let me just stick that and get to it. <laughs> now we're going to drill through this, guys. And we're going to watch this together, okay? Because as always, most satisfying thing ever. Good. Yep, there we go. Let's do three, four. All right, that exhausts that deposit completely. So uh, let me just check. I got quite a bit of inventory space. Did I have anything in the storage already for this? One is single nickel also. One, two, three, four. Always 14 then. I think from a deposit, maybe more, maybe less. We need about six more titanium and just a single lead. There's another little deposit. I mean, let's get to it. And that will do the job right there. So now all we literally need is a single lone lead. I'm certain there was a load of deposits up here. And I think I only partially drilled through them last time. I swore I had more lead though. Like, I thought I was throwing some. Obviously, I was wrong. Alright, so we're back up here. Look, get the freak away from here, right? Why don't you go walk okay, in that green stuff, yeah? Dinguses will probably do it as well. Here we go, guys. We now have some lead. We only needed one of these. Uh, I'm gonna get about five or six again. Why not stack up on the resources whilst we can? Let's go one more lead. There we go. It's broken off. Click those. So we got seven. Wait, really? <laughs> oh, I killed him. Well, that humorous moment lasted very, uh, very short, you know. You see, guys, I'm in the Lost River right now. Watch this. Oh, boom. And now we're back here. No cuts. How do I do it, okay? If I lift my hair up, guys. 
You see, instead of a scar, I have actually Harry Potter. Like, he's just right there. Just, he's always been there, okay? I just don't talk about it. So I actually have the fringe like this guy, so it kind of covers it up. All right, let's hop to it then, guys. So moon pool, we need to make those titaniums then into ingots. Yeah. Yep. We want to make this moon pool, and I think I'm going to try and angle it maybe here-ish. Uh, my guy, are you okay? Well, I think you need to recorrect your uh, whatever's going on right there. I think I want to build the moon pool just here, guys, just off to the side. And then we can just dock simply underneath. And that shouldn't be no problem at all. There we go. Good stuff. Base is starting to have all the resources that we need. And uh, oh, we got weak. Hold up a sec. Just give me a sec. I can hear everything breaking in there, you know. I'm not going to comment, all right, because it's fine. Disasters happen. Uh, I kind of... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What about my watermelons? Are they going to die? Lithium and titanium. Lithium and freaking titanium. For Let's get this done anyway. I'm going to throw you over there. For <laughs> Let's just try one of these Hull Integrities. I've got like four titanium, man. Please be enough, all right? Please be enough. Okay. It's in the positives, which means we're good. Now, I think i got to repair all this crap in here. Yep, 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 yep. Hull Integrity restored. There we go. Draining systems initiated. You better freaking hurry, man. All right, marble melons are okay. So, okay, nothing is lost. Is it kind of bad that my main concern was losing a marble melon as opposed to, like, the radiation leaking from this room? Probably. Uh, probably should get my priorities slightly straightened down here. Just gonna dock this guy for a second though, because then this can give us a chance to actually restore some of the power to it. And then I think I'm gonna take a plunge, and then I'm gonna go straight to the inactive lava zone. I want to explore this instantly. Radiation crystals, by the way, guys, they are very, very power efficient. Well, I mean, I am kind of pumping radiation into the atmosphere, but you already know, right? It doesn't matter, okay? If I'm benefiting, it's fine. So we are gonna make our way now then, guys, over toward the active or inactive lava zone. We can kind of tell that it's gonna be some kind of heat source. I mean, look at the temperature on the suit 68 when we went over one of those heat sources though it was like 75 so it's getting near boiling point here comes the big descent though man we've got a few of these little pools so these ones are sort of like a green or should i say a bluish hue what is with these seriously what are they doing oh wow this one's got like a river fall type thing all going down i wonder how deep this goes then i hope the 1300 meters will suffice i said though all we really need is the kyanite deposits i'm guessing it's going to be from this like a heat source there we go guys the first heat related monster that we've seen. You can see it's got like that reddish tint to it. Mm. Oh yes, we're here. We're here, guys. If you can already tell by the soundtrack and the sights of lava, we're getting into this place, right? It's about to get very spooky. Actually, it might be pretty nice. The inactive lava zone is fairly well. I mean, the name says it all. It's inactive. I wouldn't say safe. What I would say, though, is uh, kind of a bit more tranquil, albeit kind of still a bit freaky. We are looking, though, for kyanite. It was a kind of bluish crystal. That's what the uh, small symbol looked like. And uh, that's exactly what we're coming down here for, then, guys. Main objective. There is a lot of warpers down here, too. There's two. Listen, guys, I'm infected, but I'm trying to kill myself, all right? So don't judge me. Place is freaking crazy, dude. Look at this. Like, lava falling down. Oh, we got those power drainer things as well. Like, I've learned my lesson about those. If one sticks onto this ship, get it off. Somehow they suck the power out of electronic devices. Like, I don't know how. I didn't write the way these freaking monsters work, though, man. Kind of creepy. Kind of. That's exactly. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Now we're getting into danger territory, guys. We're starting to encounter uh, new life forms. However, the kyanite, this is what we came here for. Let's get drilling, dude. A deep blue heat resistant. That explains why we need it. It's heat resistant. Then I guess when we go to like the deeper depths, we're going to be kind of okay. You, you kind of? Oh, crap, there's a warper over there, guys. Oh, shoot. I got to be very mindful. If he throws one of his things, like I'm probably going to like get burned. Or at least I'll heat up somewhat. I don't think I'll die, but, you know, you got to be careful. Am I collecting this? Or is it just dropping on the floor? I'm so confused. Let me just check my suit quickly. This is kind of strange. Hold up. Wait, what? I'm drilling down kyanite and getting nothing... Wait, huh? Please don't tell me this is bugged. That would be so frustrating right now. Okay, I got two. Finally. I think it's been falling through the freaking map. Yep, it's, been, it's, it's still falling through the freaking map. Next deposit. Come on. Give me some good luck with this one, okay? All right, here we go. Now we're collecting kyanite. I'm standing real close. I don't want it to fall through the map or anything. So, all right, yep, do that. Do that with the drill arm. Yeah, go for it. So, I've got five kyanite so far. I think that's a pretty good yield. Let me just see actually how much we need. I don't think we'll need more than five to make two of the modification things, you know? Pro oh, the prawn suit needs three. This guy needs three, so we only need one more. And there we go. That is seven kyanite in total. We are good to go. I think, you know, I was thinking I'm going to keep investigating this place, but if I have the upgrade, then I'm not limited. Say if there's like a depth we encounter and it's too deep. So I think what I'm going to do, guys, is head back to base anyway. Hold up a second, though. Let me just see. What else do I need? I need a plasteel ingot for that one. Prawnsuit depth only requires five titanium. We need a natural plasteel ingot for the Cyclops depth module. If I go ahead and drill through one of these completely, 
and then slightly on the other titanium, uh, whatever you call it, deposit just over to the left-hand side. That will give us then everything we need. All right, guys, now I've drilled through all of the titanium and I am getting freaking hot in this thing. We're all done here. I'm gonna go back to base and I'll see you guys there. All right, let's get this guy docked nicely in there. Looks good to me. Oh crap, I've just realized I need to build like the modification thing in order to uh, make the stuff. Or oh, do I need the uh, mobile vehicle modification base thingy? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, the modification station needs diamond and a computer chip. And I think it's a computer chip, just two silver ore, if I remember correctly. Uh, gold, copper, wire, and table coral. All of which we can find down here. Guys, I ain't showing this process all right. I'll be right freaking back. I'm done. I'm, uh, I'm actually, uh, mildly done. I know the base is a state, guys. This is kind of, though, the progress base, you know? We kind of build everything here because we need it. It's, uh, not really much of a sleeping quarters, though. I guess I could put, like, another room above in time. Did I do it right, though? Let me open this thing. Okay. That is how we do it. Thank God for that. Was worried for a second, guys. It's gonna be serious, right? What? Uh, oh. Oh. Wow. So I need some of this kyanite. I need six, so that's four, five, six. That covers both the uh, prawn suit and also the cyclops too. And I think I got a lithium potentially within this base, or I've definitely got one that's in the uh, Cyclops. And we have one lithium. Oh, wait, we've got three in our inventory already. Okay, so we're fine. So we need to take the depth module from this guy right here. There we go. Oh, shoot. Come, 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 go, 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 go. Up, 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 up. Okay, we're gonna park this thing. Fortunately, it definitely has the most health in the game. That only dropped to 97, but still, I don't know. No, 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 never again. Let's get this done, guys. Step module two, let's get it. I guess it's gonna have to get damaged a little bit just before we can actually put the thing in. So yeah, the crush depth isn't no good. Let's throw that on there, though. 1,700 meters. You beautiful little piece of machinery. You know what? Let me just save that real quick. One more thing, guys. We know we can get this sword as well with the depth module, but I don't think I'm actually going to be too concerned with that at the moment. Because of that, I think I'm just going to throw all of these resources in here. Mainly, anyway, I'm only going to be using the prawn suit in the lava zone. However, one thing I'm going to take is both, or rather, should I say, two things I'm going to take, the purple and the orange artifact, because I always forget and we always need them. All right, let's get the freak back down in that inactive lava zone and get to the active lava zone. You see that? That shift in the hue that exists in the sky, guys. We're here. We made it. Oh, that's a urine. No, 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 no. We can get those down here then, so that's something worth knowing. And here's like an evolved state of one of the uh, ghost rays. It's like a different. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, that's down here too. This place is nuts though, dude. I love it. You know, it sounds so great. So much just feels like it's happening around you, but you're so contained and isolated, claustrophobic. Whoa! Noisy. I mean, goodness me, I had your breakfast yet? Ah, so this is where we can go and see a particular creature. Though, for this episode, guys, I don't want to skip steps. I'm looking for the heart of Subnautica right now. We're looking for what appears to be a castle in the middle. And you guys are going to see how insane this junk is. Northwest is the direction we're looking in, though. Let's not get lost whilst we go down here. Very, very easy to do so. And with that roaring thing just overhead. Oh, boy, it's something I don't want to experience right now. There he is. Or she, or it. Maybe it has no gender. I shouldn't assume. You're a pretty little thing, aren't you, huh? Very noisy, vocal little thing, too. As long as we stay nice and low, I'm hoping and I'm... I, I went up so many meters right there. <laughs> Problem is, guys, flat ground accompanies it. Oh, my God. Look at this. Oh, it's not going to... What did it do? It, like, twitched or something? I'm getting nervous, guys. I'm going to be honest. We got warpers. If I get zapped out, like, I'm dead. Look at all the kyanite down here, though, man, you know? So many pockets of this stuff. As long as we stay on the underground of this then, we should be able to avoid the sea dragon and kind of make our journey here a little bit more easy for ourselves. Only marginally though, guys, because as you can see, looks like the cave system has ended. Here we go. Look how red things just got right now. Woo, woo. Shout away, my dude, shout away. There it is. I see it right there, guys. There is our castle. You see this? Woo, let's go. Just imagine, like, He's close, he's close. I nearly paused game, I nearly paused game. He's looking, he's looking. You don't see nothing though. I'm, I'm, I'm microscopic, you know? I'm small. Wait, is he, he's is he descending? Hold up. Crap, he's, he's actually- Guys, ah, he's descending! Ah! Okay, okay. Oh my freaking God. He's been practicing that for this very moment, hasn't he? Let's try and linger close where the crevices are then, guys. If we can do that, he's not gonna be able to chomp us, but he fires literal fire. A common rap term is to spit fire, but this guy, I mean, I think he took it too literal when he heard that. Let's keep moving through. Whoa, this is crazy. Oh, I think they've put this in as like a safety measure for us. I mean, if it wasn't, I'd be dead. Come on, then. We're looking for an outcropping. We're gonna find it. Come on. Wait, what? 
Is that the second one? There is no way this... Yeah, I see it. I see it. <sighs> Look at this shit. Dude, he is close. Look at that. He's like looking... Oh my god! He was staring right in there! Okay, let's go. We got him. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most insane thing I've ever seen. We made it, though. Woo! Took no damage from them, I think. I feel good, man. There's another Kyanite. A loose single one as well. What the freak is that? Is that a creep? Hold up. I know it's hot. I know it's hot. I won that. I won that. Oh, my God. What is? Which has formed in this area can be carbon dated to between 800 Dang. and 3,000 Earth years ago. Oh, man, this junk is ancient. So, my question now is, is the inner rock structure naturally like this, you know, almost like the veins of a beast, and there's another egg. I just feel like we're in a heart, you know, all the different, like, different systems, and the way the heat is placed, it feels like it, dude, it's kind of creepy. Let's keep moving down, though, guys, even more, okay. Oh, that looks insane! Ooh, we made it. We made it. He's been there a long time, though, as have you. So, guys, we gotta try and look for an entrance point to this thing ASAP. I see one! Come on! There you go, let's get in! Woo! We are safe. Huh? I've been waiting for this moment for some time, guys. I really have 1.2k meters deep. And this is what we find. Look at this place, dude. Oh, this is crazy. Keep moving through there. Let's not get too excited. Oh, yeah, of course. The little alien drones are down here, too. We also have a uh, drillable iron cube deposit. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder how many we'll accumulate from this. High capacity alien energy source. Yeah, you don't freaking say. Just cleared out that deposit right there then. Let's see. Oh, whoa, of course. I'm there jumping thinking that we're still underwater. So this thing like sinks down. Like, look at that. Um, <laughs> open storage anyway. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven iron cubes. Dude, that is freaking nuts. Okay, let's try and find one of these alien things though. I, uh, I want to scan one of these, take a read about them. Because uh, maybe it's been updated since the last time. Aha! I see ya! Okay, let's scan it from here. Safe, nice, distance. Alien robot. They're kind of fascinating, aren't they, you know? There we go. Data download complete. This device is of alien origin. You don't say. Although its design is relatively simple, the purpose, its low threat level is at odds with the advanced technology apparently available to its designers, suggesting it was intended more to patrol alien facilities and repair damaged infrastructure than to deter invaders. Despite its simple design, this construction is quite elegant in its minimalism. Four electromagnetic legs allow it to traverse floors, walls, and ceilings with reasonable speed and appear to be replaceable. Internally, there are a few moving parts rendering this construct energy efficient and resistant to wear over time. A rechargeable iron-based power reserve ensures it continues to operate. That's pretty cool then. So they were almost like an autonomous system where they would manually repair. <gasps> Hold up. Is this uh, what they call a slave teleporter? I don't know. I think this might be the term. Or is this one like the uh, master teleporter or something? Because a slave tel- uh, I think you drop- Whoa. Holy- What the heck happened there? I ain't questioning that. I mean, there is a teleporter. Worry number one. My dude. Oh my goodness, this is the first teleporter I've linked which is underwater. I'm gonna save my game. I am fascinated. Where will this take us to? We've just linked this teleporter for some reason, all right? Let's go through this. Let's see, hopefully... Okay, we can go through with the prawn suit. 89 meters as a depth. We are not far away at all. What the heck? We're gonna be spat out somewhere any second right now. We've been teleporting for a while. But this is clearly quite the journey. And we're here. Is this in the quarantine enforcement platform? It is. Oh my gosh. So now we've got a huge link in order to get down there. That is going to save so much time traversing to and from. Awesome, dude. All right, now I'm going to go straight back through there. Wow, that is so time efficient. All right, we are back anyway. Let me just move on through. So this is why I bring both the purple and the other one. We only need the purple for this. What did we need the orange tablet for? I haven't used that one yet. Shut the force field down. There is a blue tablet. Let's scan this before we take it. So then we can also make this. I guarantee you as well. God damn it. This is going to use kyanite, I think, to make this one. Let's just double check this. Smooth and cold with a blue light which illuminates an alien symbol resembling an uppercase H. While it's likely these devices served in part as security clearance for whoever constructed them, their size suggests some additional purpose, such as personal computers. As suspected, two kyanite in order to make that one. So it's nickel for the orange, diamond for the first one, and kyanite for that one. Okay, got ya. What do we have around this corner here? Okay, it's glowing red. This is probably an alternate entry point. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. Funny how this time the prawn suit didn't sit down, and that actually gives you an idea of scale. You see how massive that thing was in comparison to us? Right, let's keep walking anyway, and you know what? 
That also gives me a bit of a size comparison to the height of the precursors, you see. The prawn suit can fit under here. So I think the precursors may have been about double the size of a human. I don't know though, guys. Okay, we've got a data download point just here. Don't be a purple. Don't be a purple. <laughs> okay, fossil data just there. And then we have another iron cube. For goodness sake, though, man. Are you, can I try? Really? Slightly mad. Okay, slightly mad. Let's check out this terminal data that was over here. So fossil data, fossil data recording from the volcanic rock that was excavated to construct the alien power facility. It has been possible to extrapolate a number of key trends. Genetic divergence. The aliens recorded data on indigenous organic remains originating between 10,000 to 1,000 years. The life forms on record feature an unusually low overlap with these encounters so far on 4546B. Soil samples from 1,000 years ago contain 300% higher concentrations of organic remains than the soil average. This supports a mass extinction event, killing off the majority of species and forcing rapid adaption amongst many of the survivors. Okay, that's interesting. Though we have a problem of which I'm going to solve off camera because I do not want to commentate for 45 minutes. I'm not wasting your guys' time watching me go all the way back to find diamonds, come all the way back again. That is the essence of boring. So I think, hold up a sec, could I, uh, can I do it quicker this way? You know what, I probably could. And I think, okay, yeah, this is going to be much quicker then. So I can go straight through here. I can find the diamond on the island. I know it's quite a hot spot for that. And then we're just going to get over to the life pod and then back over here again. All right, well, there's one of the diamonds already. That was quick. And we already know that we're massively stocked up with those iron cubes. All right, guys, I'm doing this off camera. See you in a second. Seriously, guys, that was not that bad at all, especially compared to last time where it was like 45 minutes. That was when I needed something in the disease facility. This time, though, that was a very convenient uh, teleport, I suppose. Drop the force field. Here we go. This is some kind of main power source, guys. It's time we learn about this. Alien thermal plan. Let's start by scanning this. So I wonder what this place is generating the power for, huh? Gotta be doing something bigger here that we still haven't seen. Here we go, guys. We're getting so many good stuff. Primary containment facility. The big thing, dude. Facility location updated. Mm -hmm. Volcanic area connected to this cave system. Oh, yes. At depth, 1.4 kilometers. We're good to get there, too. We have this orange one here. Ion power data. Wow, dude, wait, data. blueprints? So we can make them? Wait, hold up. Hang on a sec. Ion power blueprints for malium data. Blueprints stored to data bank. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is when we can start to use them for crafting. Actually, I want to make my way back down here, guys. I want this to be the backdrop whilst I read through these. This is going to be very very interesting. Let's start with the power data, okay, and move our way through. So, it has been possible to extract useful information regarding the ion power. The cubes are grown artificially from a mineral substance and are treated to remain in a stable state despite the huge ionic energy contained within. By installing an ion cube in an appropriate device, this energy can be released as electrical power. That is very, very important, man. So, all these battery problems, like, no more! In the codes and clues, you know, we actually have uh, the primary containment. Okay, that's interesting. A power router on the thermal plant is distributing energy collected on site to other facilities on the planet. Primary containment facility location updated, constructed within a natural chasm, we've already seen one, connected to this cave network, south southeast area of volcanic activity and 1.4 kilometers depth. The power distribution, south warping quarantine enforcement units, only 5%, so that's for the warpers we're seeing. Arch network, 10%, the sanctuaries, which we haven't found yet, and I do want to see. Quarantine enforcement platform, 35. Disease research, I mean, we already know that place is gone. The primary containment is this 20% here, and there's a 20% reserve. There is no clear way to interrupt the power flow. All right, guys, well, there we have it. Big... Big things are about to amass from this point on. Next episode is going to be crazy, okay? We are going to have to make our way down even deeper. 1.4 kilometers depth with this guy right here. This thing is going to be our knight in shining armor, quite literally. And I think, really, I may leave this episode off here because we just did a whole load of story stuff and it's big things happening from here on out. I kind of like the idea as well of ending in a safety net to an extent. I mean, we're not being attacked, so safe as it can be. Thank you, though, guys, for watching this episode of Subnautica. I hope you did enjoy. This was investigating the primary research facility, getting the moon pool, and also the upgrade fragments, so we are pretty much all good to go. But if you guys did enjoy this video, why not drop me that like crane, and hey, if you're new around here, why not subscribe for more videos just like this one right here. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I of course hope you did enjoy, and I will of course see you on the next one.